Hey there, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another review, or I should say re-review, since I'm re-reviewing the four Batman films. This time, Batman Forever came out in 1995, was a huge, huge hit. The first one of two, directed by Joel Schumacher, who I do enjoy as, an, as a director, almost an actor, as a director because... He did The Lost Boys, Falling Down, Flatliners, DC Cab, uh, Phone Booth, A Time to Kill. All films I like. 8mm is great. I reviewed that on a channel like a year or so ago. 8mm is definitely one of Nicolas Cage's better movies. But the guy's done a lot of good stuff. Now, from what I understand, there was toss for Tim Burton to do a Batman 3, but Batman Returns came out, did not make this, it was a big hit, but it did not make as much money as the first film, and more so, Warner Brothers got a lot of complaints. They got a lot of complaints from parents and McDonald's and saying it's too dark, it's too blah blah blah. It's steering kids. And I'm thinking, so? <laughs> Tough it up. If they're steered by this, then uh, get them out of the bubble. But the studio, even when Tim Burton, when he's interviewed, there, there's a point where he's like, he talks about being the mean. He's like, you don't really want me to do a Batman 3, do you? Oh no, blah, 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 blah. Which, really, they don't. I'm guessing because, or this is why I remember reading, I don't know if this is true, that McDonald's was not going to do any advertising, any deal with Warner Brothers for Batman 3 if Tim Burton was directing. And they're like, no, 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 Tim Burton's directing. He's not directing. Okay, we'll do business with you. And I remember when Batman Forever came out, McDonald's had these mugs, like glass mugs, and one had a like question mark on it, and Batman on it, and various other stuff. So because, again, Tim Burton, he's, it's too dark, you know, Batman Returns is too dark, which I love Batman Returns. I think Batman Returns is great. I don't get the hate for it. Hey, what do I know? They went to Joe Schumacher. Michael Keaton, you know, whether being loyal to Tim Burton, reading the script and going, well, this sucks. <laughs> like the, how cartoonish and lighthearted, maybe that's not the right word, but being lighter, you know, just didn't float Michael Keaton's boat. And so he left. So they got Val Kilmer to play the new Batman. Val Kilmer, I thought he did a good job, especially as Bruce Wayne. He definitely had that inner turmoil yeah, feel to him. I thought the, his voice as Batman was not ridiculous, was not over the top, was not silly like Christian Bale's Batman. And it seemed like Val Kilmer was actually trying to do something while George Clooney was just being himself. Like, hey, I'm Batman. <laughs> that, that, that was George Clooney. Hey, how's it going? I'm Batman. Now what? Val Kilmer is actually trying to be Batman. <laughs> so to speak. And Michael Keaton's my favorite Batman. If I had to pick a second best Batman, I would probably be, go with Val Kilmer. And, you know, I've liked Val Kilmer in other films. I liked him in Willow. He was good in that. He was good in this film called Real Genius. That was fun. Apparently, behind the scenes, he's a very hard guy to work with. A lot of horror stories, like when he was doing the Island of Dr. Moreau. If you watch, if you find that documentary about when Richard Stanley was going to do it, there's a lot of horror stories you hear about how much of an ass Val Kilmer was 
And you've heard that multiple times on multiple movies. But, I mean, he does a good job in flits, like Tombstone, for example. Uh, the plot, he's going after this character named Two-Face, played by Tyler Lee Jones. Along the way, you have the origin of Robin, Chris O'Donnell's character, where his family falls to their death in this during this circus sequence where Two-Face shoots at them while they're trying to get this bomb out of there. They fall to their deaths. He wants revenge. He lives with Bruce Wayne and then finds out who Bruce Wayne is, then wants to be his partner. Bruce Wayne says no. Batman says no. Ultimately, they get together and they go off to the bad guys to fight them. Jim Carrey's Nigma. Edward Nigma, who is his worker, crazed worker, is shot down by Bruce Wayne for you know for his ideas, and then decides fuck it. I'm gonna be this character named the Riddler, team up with Two Face, put these machines in homes that suck out brain waves, so I could be the smartest man alive. It, this is a very campy movie. I will say that it's a very campy movie although not as much as Batman and Robin at least there are moments where like Val Kilmer's performance and others where you try to get at least a little bit of merit who else is that Nicole Kidman as a very slutty psychologist that's really uh, her character's name is Chase Meridian all I, I thought of her character was slut <laughs> Because like she's ready to take her clothes off every five seconds. Now that that's a bad thing. Ready to sit on Batman's face. Lucky fuck. And uh, you know. Smother Bruce Wayne with her titties. I mean just again. Anytime she was on screen I'm like. She's being very slutty in this scene. Um, I guess I approve this but. I approve this message but. <laughs> just, I, I buy her as a psychologist. It's just. Sunny mid slut jab. Jab what? Jab my cock. Please. Sit down, psychologist. What do you want to talk about? I want to talk about my cock. Anyway. This is my cock. This is how big it is. But anyway. Moving along. I know if Tim Byrne want if he had done a third film. Billy D. Williams would have played Two Face because Billy D. Williams did play Harvey Dent in the first Batman, 1989. And one of the reasons Billy D. Williams took the role is that hopefully, eventually, he would be Two Face, which I would like to have seen Billy D. Williams as Two Face. I think, honestly, he would have done a better job than Timely Jones because Timely Jones, I like Timely Jones. I, I have fun with his role in this. I, I kind of because I like Timely Jones as an actor and he's he's chewing the scenery he's chewing the drapes he's chewing the bed he's chewing the floor he's chewing the lambs he's chewing the chew toys he's chewing the bud spray he's chewing the hairspray he's chewing the dog spray and then whatever he gets his hands on he's chewing it up and spitting it out and then chewing that up again and try and be like Joker Jad Nicholson Joker times 10 and I, I kind of had some fun with it, but I don't, I wouldn't really call it a good performance. It did it did make me kind of smile. At the bat with the play, we'll play. Or why don't you just die? I mean, it did make me laugh, which I'm sure was the intended result, but uh, pretty over the top there. I think there's sort of been some times where, I don't know, Joe Schumacher could have held back the reins, so to speak. Uh, Jim Terry. I do like Jim Terry. This is a time where he was being very successful. Oh, before I get to that, when Tim Burton was doing Batman 3, he was going to have Billy D. Williams' as Two Face, and I believe one of the guys he wanted for the Riddler was Robin Williams which would have been interesting and then 
had hired Marlon Wayans for Robin. Because I guess he was supposed to appear at the end of Batman Returns. But that was cut out. And they're like, okay, well, we got to deal with you. We'll use you for Batman 3. But then since Dan Byrne didn't do it, and then Joe Schumacher's like, well, I don't want to use him for Robin. I want to cast someone else for Robin. So Marlon Wayans, I don't know if he got a payday or what happened, but he went bye-bye. So yeah, if Tim Burton did Batman 3, you have you would have had Michael Keaton as Batman, Marlon Wayans as Robin, which I don't know about that. Well, I mean, he did a good job with uh, Requiem for a Dream. So if he tapped into that... You know, not be like a jokey Robin making jokes every fight. Like, tap more into the Rectory for a Dream, Marlon Wayans, than I could see it. Because I like Rectory for a Dream. Maybe Robin, Robin Williams is Riddler. Maybe, you know, of course, Billy D. Williams is Two-Face. And there are people who have done, like, fake trailers of that on YouTube, which looked interesting. And I would have liked to have seen that more than the film we have. Now, I don't hate this film. But this is a film that does not hold up well. I think back in 1995 when this this came out and as a kid I saw on VHS. I liked it more back then than I do now. Again, I don't hate it because there's elements of it I do like. For example, the soundtrack is really good. I love the soundtrack. The whole Hold Me, Thrill Me, Kiss Me, Kill Me song. The uh, <sighs> Seal did it. What was the song? Tis from a rose, or was it Tis by a rose? I've been Tis by a rose. Yeah, these Tis from for, I can't believe I forgot that damn Tis from a rose. That's what it is. Tis from a rose. It's a good soundtrack. Uh, the the look of the film is very vibrant, colorful. Definitely give kudos to the art direction, the, the sets. A lot of this is built for real. The money's definitely on the screen, like the Riddler's Lair and like how gigantic these sets were. Pretty nice to look at. Granted, I just personally prefer the darker, shadowy Gotham of Tim Burton's films. Just a personal preference, but the people who made the sets and art and Batman Forever, they did do a good job for what kind of movie it's supposed to be. Uh, Elliot Goldenthal, I thought he did fine in the musical score. I, I prefer Danny Elfman's music from Batman and Batman Returns. But Elliot, Elliot Goldenthal, uh, uh, he did fine. I did for the kind of films they were, they, they fit well. Chris O'Donnell as Robin, I'm mixed on because sometimes he was annoying, other times like, okay, he's all right. I mean, Chris O'Donnell is one of those actors, I'm like, eh, one of those, eh, you know, I don't hate him, I don't love him, it's just, eh. I mean, there's some annoying things to Robin, like this really stupid, out of place scene where he's he did his laundry at Alfred the Butler's watching him and just I guess to show off to Alfred he's like and then the music like pops in this trying to be like I don't know not heavy metal but whatever rock music score and it's just Chris O'Donnell doing his clothes like oh I'm going to press uh, this butler I'm going to Put my socks like nunchucks and put them on the thing. And then I'm going to lift my foot up and stretch the shirt. And then I'm going to fucking piss on the fucking washer and dryer. And then I'm going to kick the washing machine until it's dead. And then I'm going to sit and fart on it. And it'll cause enough rumble to dry the fucking... F clothes and then I'm going to spin on it so I don't even need the washer I don't know just he was just going all over this shit like especially the moment where it's like I'm going to lift my leg and move it with my toes I'm like st stick the toes in your mouth it just came off as arrogant and like 
out of the blue, what the fuckness? Like, what the fuck is this shit? Just really out of the blue and what the fuck? I know on the commentary, Joe Schumacher's like, well, this was done because, like, those Hong Kong films where they'll take you know, random ordinary scenes and have a more short scene, and then I'm like, that's not a good excuse. Oh, speaking of more short, uh, you know, utilizing more shorts, Don the Dragon Wilson does have an appearance in this. Granted, did not recognize him at first because he's all painted up on his face, but the black light scene where this gay member, Chris O'Donnell, fights it and the leader is Don the Dragon Wilson. I'm like, okay. A Jim Carrey. Certain moments I don't mind from him in the movie. There's other moments where he's really, really over the top campy. He kind of signifies this film where probably when I was a kid in 1995 seeing this on VHS, I liked it more than I did now because when I watch it now, it was kind of tough to sit through. At the end of the day, I would say it's a time waster because of, you know, Jim Terry, I don't know if he just wore me down or sometimes his comedy was infectious and I liked some of his stuff, some of his lines like, your interest was good, his was better. Why showmanship? Or... When he has that weird suit on and lights up and he's talking to Cole Kim and he's like, You keep me safe when I'm jogging at night. So, I again, mean, there are moments, okay, it made me smirk or I was entertained by. But there's a lot of times where I'm like, Jesus, like, uh, shh, shut up. Like, just ease down. Hey Ripley, ease down, ease down, just ease it down, man. And that's the thing, like Jim Carrey has proven he could be good at dramatic work, like Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind, The Truman Show. Even in the number 23, he wasn't the problem with that movie, it was the crappy script and ending, but he wasn't the problem with that performance wise at least I don't think when he played the the normal guy not when he was imagining himself as a, well anyway I'm not talking about number 23 but when he was just playing himself as this dog catcher guy and then this crazy stuff happening he did find that part in that movie but anyway which that was directed by Joel Schumacher as well number 23 I'd rather watch this number 23 I'll say that but It is a film that's kind of tough to sit through nowadays. From the beginning when Batman's there and you know Alfred's like, would you like to say a witch? And then Batman goes, I'll get drive through. Who did drive through at what? McDonald's? Mickey D's gonna be getting the bat burgers and bat nuggets for fucking Batman? It's just like, you don't need a drive through What, on your back credit card? Well, you'll see that next time, back credit card. But it just... It's just one of those things where... you wa I'm watching the film, and I appreciate the look of the film. I appreciate the art style, the effects work. Uh, the action scenes, how acrobatic Batman is, like when he drops down, he does flips. Action scenes, like the car chase, and he puts the thing up, and the car gets on the side of the building and goes up as the bad guys crash and explode behind the car as it's going up the wall. But again, it's just there are times where like, God, it's a bit too much, ease back, and then Batman Robin, 
They just went, you know, times 20. <clears throat> so then you appreciate the moments where, oh, there's Val Kilmer, think of his past and his family and so this book that, like a journal that is like repressed memories and then some interesting stuff that was in the deleted scenes section that should have been put back in there. And like I said, you know, Jim Terry kind of signifies this movie where I'm mixed on, where I don't hate it and I don't love it. Like Jim Terry, I don't hate his performance. I don't love it during this time. I mean, I definitely say I enjoyed Ace Ventura, both of them more than this. Dumb and Dumber more, The Mask more. Although he's pretty over the top in that. But it, Batman Forever is one of those hard movies to review. Like when I sat down, like, what the hell am I going to say about this? Because I wasn't mad, I wasn't angry. I did I enjoyed? Sometimes the colorfulness of Jim Carrey and Tom Lee Jones working together, which apparently the Tom Lee Jones hated Jim Carrey during the making of the film. One rumor is because when w one of the Ace Ventura films came out, Tom Lee Jones had a film called Cobb came out, and that was supposed to be Tom Lee Jones like bid swing for the fences. I think like Jim Carrey talked about this on Howard Stern and. Cobb didn't do well and Ace Ventura did so maybe that bothered Timely Jones or he didn't like how silly Jim Terry was his buffoonery but it's like well that's what Jim Terry's hired for and I know I'm going over the place I'm going sort of around in circles but it just Val Kilmer, I thought did a good job. Chris O'Donnell, eh. I mean, uh, there's worse, there's better, eh. Mixed, very mixed on him. Sometimes he was annoying, sometimes he was okay. Of course, I've never been a fan of the Robin character, I'll be honest, whether it be in comics or cartoons. I never gave a shit about Robin. I never gave a fuck about Robin. Even that Batman vs. Team and T. I wish Raphael would take Robin and slam dunk, slam dunk his ass through a fucking basket on fire. I wish. That would have made the movie for me. If Raphael just beat the shit out of Robin and then crumpled him to a fucking ball and tipped him through a fucking field goal on fire, then that Batman vs. Ninja Turtle movie, I would be like, yeah! Two thumbs up, cool. Raphael's a badass. He took that punk ass kid and cranked him up like a paper football and ticked him. Alright. Best movie ever. 10 out of 10. UPN. But anyway. That's, maybe that's another thing. I didn't never gave a shit about Robin. So I didn't care if he was in the movie or not. Honestly, for me, I prefer him not being in the movie, but that's just I didn't. Personal preference. The Nicole Kidman, I didn't like her because she just seemed slutty, mid slut slut. I thought Tim Basinger did a good job. Or Michelle Pfeiffer. I'm just talking about women in the past Batman films. Again, Nicole Timmons like, hey, I'm a slut. Here's my titties. Let me take off my clothes. I want to sit on Batman's face. Now I want to sit on Bruce Wayne's face. That, that's really what her role was. That's what it seemed like. Every every scene she almost had the cum face like oh you know it's like okay i mean she's pretty she's hot beautiful but i mean i think she's done better in other films you know i think she was better in the previous film dead calm i think there's other films in the future she did a better job with in well i'm not a big fan of the movie the others but she was good in it the invasion i was not a fan of but Nicole Kidman wasn't the problem with that. Tom Lee Jones, like I say, he's over the top, very camping it up. 
kind of enjoyed parts of it. Other parts, like, oh, geez, hold back a little bit. Same with Jim Carrey. It's a very campy film, like I mentioned in the beginning. Like trying to go on that 60s Batman TV show, which honestly, I never grew up with. I never grew up with the 60s Batman TV show. I haven't watched much of it. I've seen bits and pieces on YouTube. I think I have the Batman Adam West movie, and I think I saw it once, but I don't remember much about it other than he's trying to find where to put the bomb. But maybe because I didn't grow up with that. And it's like, eh, I don't know about that. But I mean, it didn't bore me. It didn't lose my interest. There were enough little moments of easing back off the camp train. Like, okay, a good moment with Chris O'Donnell is when his family died and his reaction to his family dying. Like, that was a good moment for Chris O'Donnell. When Chris O'Donnell was trying to beat up Batman, it's like, you knew, like, you, Two Face wanted you, let him die, and Batman goes, if Bruce Wayne could have, he would have given his life to save your family. And he did try. So again, there's little moments like that that ease up the... How do I put it? You know, they have enough of those moments so it's not so much of a chore to watch a camp-filled movie. That's one of the many problems about Robin is the entire movie was that. And the only time they even attempt is when Alfred being sick, but even then it just wasn't nearly enough. So again, the the soundtrack was good, the look of the film was good, the art direction, the, the colorful set design, the... Some of the, you know, the action sequences. And it's like there's a couple dark moments amongst a lot of the silliness, which was appreciated. And uh, I liked Val Kilmer. Some moments with Jim Terry, some moments with Tom Lee Jones. I always forget like Drew Barrymore is in this too. Like Drew Barrymore, very small role as one of the women of uh, Two Faces. There are a couple lines that Tom Lee Jones got a, a chuckle out of me with the way he delivered them. I will admit that. But yeah, it did feel like he was playing Joker Part 2 and not Two Face. But either way, I mean, those are my thoughts on Batman Forever. I don't hate the film. It's a time waster. But I do not think it's a film that holds up. You know. It definitely. Since 1995 when I saw it on VHS. It definitely went down. Quite a few pegs. And it's just like. Eh. You have to watch it. But it's not a film I. Go back and rewatch a lot. It's, like, eh, it's kind of. Hard to sit through. That's just me. Although I rather see it than any of the Christopher Nolan films. <laughs> so there you go. Maybe just me. Uh, I'm I'm just more of a Tim Burton Batman fan than a Batman fan. Maybe that's the case. Although I do like the Dark Knight uh, Returns with Peter Weller voice in it, and actually some of the animated films I'm looking over there like. Under the Red Hood and uh, what was that other one? Yeah, The Dark Knight Returns and Superman, Batman, Public Enemies and such. But anyway, thanks for watching. Take care. We will see you in the next video.
later.